everybody. Welcome to We'd Rather Be Reading. I'm Jerrica. And I'm Leah. How are you today? I'm all right. I feel good. I feel good. The sun is shining, so that's always Oh, good. yay. Oh, bonus. God. It snow. snowed. <laughs> snow. I don't I, like snow. I, what the fuck is wrong with you? I mean, I like snow when there's lots of snow on the ground and there's like snow, snow. But this freaking snow falling and then melting and then being slush okay, immediately, like, I don't like The it. wetness. I don't love wet. I don't. But I no. really love snow. And like when it falls down, I don't even care what temperature it is outside. I'm like, look, everybody, the snow is falling. <laughs> like it's, it's a Christmas miracle, like every single time. Yeah. And it's I woke the kids up jokes, early. Like, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Like, no, <laughs> shut up. It's November. <laughs> <laughs> I watched a horrible christmas movie the other day on netflix we watched one too, i was at I was which at, one did you watch it was called was it 48 christmas wishes because no, this movie no, is not. the worst no it's not it was, it's like the new christmas romance like hallmarky movie that's on on uh, netflix and it's called we watched last christmas it's did called you watch like that? love ah, love hard Love Hard. Oh, yeah, we watched that one, too. You oh, watched God. it? <laughs> no. I like. But I have, a, I have a thing for Paxton. I'm going to call him Paxton. He's uh, the hot guy in there. He's uh, the main uh, guy in uh, Never Ever Ever, the TV series. And I love that TV show. Oh, I've I never seen it. Him. Never seen it. So I was like... He seemed to be like I'm a like, nothing character. in this movie. I'm going to watch it, you know. So oh, I watched yeah. it. But, but we also watched uh, Last Christmas. Okay. Which I'm not going to talk too much about because I'm going to spoil the twist. But it was not worth it, the twist. Oh. Or the movie. Oh. Yeah. Um, but this love art, <laughs> first of all, horrible title. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and second, it made me remind, it reminded me of it because you were just saying, baby, it's cold. No, you weren't saying, baby, it's cold. That's no. You said it's beginning to look a lot like her. And they were like, cold. it's rapey. Like... And she's like, I don't want you to sing this rapey song. Them? And then he it's good. redid the words. <laughs> and yeah, and yeah, that was good. actually the only part of the whole movie that I could stand yeah. by. For sure. I mean, there's so many wrong things about that movie. Like, one, figuring out you've been catfished instead of <laughs> staying, you leave and you go you home. Immediately you immediately leave. leave. <laughs> and instead of lying to the person you're interested in and pretending to like all this shit, just don't because you don't build a good relationship foundation on lies Lie. of, hey, yeah. I like all of these things. You know, yeah. do you know when I met my husband, because uh, my name is Leah, and I was like, he was asking my name and I said Leah and he went like the princess because he heard Leia and I was like I hadn't even watched Star Wars and I'm like sure I can be a princess I'm like yeah sure and, so and you he were like, thought maybe that I he was will like be more into me because into my Star name is Wars. Leia <laughs> what? <laughs> just because you're a birth of right and name. I had not even watched it no <laughs> no so you know our relationship is built on lies but you know it has been lasting for a God awful many years, so you know clearly it worked out. <laughs> when so, I never mind my mind what I just said there. You can build your relationship on lies. It works. I think ours is ours is based on um not not a lie but an omission. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a type of lie. I, I guess. know. Yeah. So that's the basis of our relationship omissions. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, I didn't lie about it. I just didn't tell you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because he, uh, he's 10 years older than me, and I knew he was going to be 10 years older than me. Mm -hmm. But I was 23, and I figured that at 33, successful engineer, pilot's not going to be interested in a 23-year-old halfway across the world. So I just didn't tell him how old I was. <laughs> he was like, how old are you? Like, ah, oh, it's a good question. We don't talk yeah. about our age. <laughs> no age, age is just a number. Age is just a number. Yeah. I'm wise for my age. I have experience. So I have a job. Experience. Anyways, um, then eventually he found out how old I was. And I think forever, he still didn't know. It was, I think I turned 25. And he's like, how old are you turning this year? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and then only when I actually moved in with him when I was 26, he was like, you're 26. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Cha-cha, now you got a 10-year younger girlfriend. Yeah, How do you like, feel look, about that? You're I mean, involved you kind of already. always had it, but you just didn't know. Boom. So whenever he would, people would ask us, oh, how old's your girlfriend? He'd be like, I don't know, 20-something. <laughs> Honestly, he's so <laughs> oblivious. Yeah. I don't think it wouldn't even, it would never have even mattered to him. Anyways, age is just a number. 
So, this week we read The Gilded Wolf by, and there is an interview at the end of the audiobook where she says oh. her name. So, I've been oh, practicing. Boom, 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 boom. It's Roshni Shokshi. Nice. Yep. So, I've been practicing Roshni Shokshi. Wow, Leah, yes, this is I know. a movement I should get forward. A gold star for saying her Super. name right. Many yes. stars. Many stars. Send them my way on, on Twitter and Instagram. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and uh, I have to say, I did not particularly enjoy this heist book because the heist was not heisty enough. Where can I get a good freaking heist book where the heist I, uh, is heisty You enough? know, when, when the heist ended, I was like, no, it's not really a heist. heist <laughs> I was the same. I'm like, this is not a heist. This is like a, a quest to search for something. And then does, I don't know, it was... Uh, and when all those like redemption bones came to life, yeah. I was like, what the frick? No, I want heist. Heist! Give me a good old stealing art story or something. Do you want to hear a hilarious recent heist story? Not story, but t- uh, movie. Me and Johan watched a movie on Netflix the other day that was called something about heisting. And it was this German guy who is the main mm-hmm. actor. And he's like a lock, like super locksmith guy. Mm-hmm. And he can unlock these three like amazing um, vaults that have never ever been able to be hacked or whatever you call it when you break into a vault. And we were like, wow, this movie was so fun, so good heisting. And then there was a second part because this was the prequel movie, but we watched the prequel first. Mm -hmm. We didn't know about the actual. Yeah, right order. (laughs) But then when we watched the actual movie, it's zombies. (laughs) It's, All right, it's okay. a zombie killing, and the uh, like safe cracker is there with the, the zombie heist crew to try to break into the zombie zone into the Las Vegas casino to crack the safe and get all of the monies out of the zombie um, ap- apocalypse. Mm. And um, I would say, was fucking weird. <laughs> Johan was like, are these the same so, stories? Zombies. Which is your favorite zombie movie? Um, Zombieland. I like Zombieland. But I like Shaun of the Dead the best. Okay, I love Shaun of the Dead okay, too. Of the Dead but best. I love zombie movies you when know, they I make a joke him. about it, right? You met like, him, Simon Pegg. You did? Yeah, we were at like some Comic Con or something like in, in London. He was flirting with me. <gasps> and it's so funny because we had like the sign thing. And to mine, it's like he's got all this text on like, Leo, so nice to meet you, blah, blah, blah. And on JF's, he says, cheers, mate. <laughs> 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 Which is really funny. Uh, Okay, so that's a heist movie and a zombie movie. Two in yeah, one, if you guys wish one. to. A double whammy. Oh my god. Good. But this, this movie, movie is not no, this, this, this book was no. not a, a very particularly heist. But you know, I like the characters' uh, personalities and stuff, and I thought that it w- might make an movie. okay movie. I don't know, man. Like, I, they uh, would make a character. Well, like I was saying last week, I attempted to listen to this and i actually went back to listening after a little while because i I did not have time to read i was running out of time things were happening it wasn't working out so i was like i need to cook dinner and i also need to listen so i listened to the book and the french accent and then there was two narrators which i didn't even realize when i spoke to you last because in the first chapters this was the one narrator but then he changes and there's this guy and he has the most wooden voice of all of the voices and he's so slow when he speaks and he's really not good and they pronounce all the name like Severin and Lila and Zofia and you know like this Mm. it was very annoying um and he took away from the from the book quite a lot. So maybe I, I don't like it because I was... You made me listen to a little bit of your audio book because mm. I didn't have access to it. Scribed. Scribed. <laughs> Keep putting us in jail. What is this? We're not criminals. Is... We're book lovers. Honestly, We're lovers, you're... not criminals. <laughs> oh Scribe is going to get so many angry letters. You're going to uh, be like, what does this Jerica do for a living? Does she not have a job? Does she only read and listen to books? I got a like, would you rate life? Scribed? And I put like... Could be improved thing. And then I got like this, do you want to write more? And I'm like, I don't have time for this. No. <laughs> oh, I always do. <laughs> but I didn't have time. Book jail. Get me Book out of jail. it. Thanks, Fair scribed. Bah. So anyways, Leah made me listen to the audiobook a little bit. And uh, no thanks. I'm no so thanks. happy that I got to read it. Yeah. 
and the French accent. I guess really... put all my own voices in my own head, and no one had a French accent. I'm hoping in your head because they should not have. I mean, hypnos sounded like Haitian French, you know, but like think, New Orleans French. But I think what what annoys me with this kind of things where you put accent, like if you have a book that's written all in English and it takes place in France, then if they're speaking English to each other, they should be speaking English without accent. Because if they're all speaking with a French accent, then they would all be speaking French. Have you ever met two French people that Zero. would no. option, like voluntarily speak English no. to each other? No, no, this does not happen. They would be speaking French. So either they'd be speaking French or not at all. But they they weren't all French though. So why are they having They're French accents? They all anyway. live in Paris. I okay. don't know. Weird. Whatever. Uh, so in I, this movie, yeah, I don't movie, even know. Do, book. Book. Mm-hmm. I am stuck on movies. I don't mm-hmm, know what's wrong with mm-hmm, me. Mm-hmm. Do you have a super summary? Because I'm not sure about if I can summarize this. Because I, I try to take no. Med, 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 med. <laughs> I have a ton notes. of notes to the point of where I'm not so sure I'd be able to super summarize it, but I would say that it's like a diverse and also queer group of ragtag individuals mm-hmm. set in France in the 1800s, which is pretty unique, I would say, yeah. for the era. And there's lots of mixed race, too, yeah, 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 which yeah. is, yeah. Uh, I guess, maybe not unique, but at least not very tolerated, I'm guessing, back in the days. No, especially yeah. not for being like, heads of houses and stuff yeah. so there's these houses and some of them have heads of houses or matriarchs or patriarchs and uh the other ones are like uh, don't have a line and they need to find it and so this group decides to band together and try to figure out uh but that's how not to... quite true though because the group is already together they're like a little no, bunch it... of thieves and they're they're, hypnos they're, comes in after. Yeah, but Hypnos is the only addition to the group. The other ones are already kind but of But Hypnos together. makes it about the houses. Yeah, he does. And the other ones are just thieves. Well, I mean, Layla is maid, which we find out. Yeah. So she's not actually a real person. Or maybe she is a real person. But, but she, she knew she was when, she's, she when was people don't in call it. her real. No. But she is basically stillborn. And her parents are like going to this magician who moves her consciousness into another vessel and she has like this this big scar along her back and she will expire after the age of eight of 19 and she has like one year to go or something like that and she is uh, something like in and out of both wor- of worlds mm-hmm. and if she touches things you can read them but this was also inconsistent there was a few yeah. inconsistencies that really bugged me throughout this like in the beginning, there's, like, everything she touches, she accidentally reads. But then towards, like, the middle and the end of the book, like, that was kind of forgotten that she could choose to read stuff mm-hmm. if she touched them, but she didn't have to read stuff. And then it's also, like, she finds things in a bookshelf by reading the bookshelf, and she finds things, like, put inside of a book. It's, like, how would she find that out? Like, wouldn't the bookshelf just be, like, this book was taken, this book was put back, this book was taken, you know? Mm-hmm. How would they know what's in the books? This I kind of and and the biggest biggest which I got a lot of like question question about is the freaking rings the house rings yeah because in the beginning he, it's like it's welded it's welded into the skin and, and then the afterwards and then he's like, all like fakes he takes it and takes it, it, it off, off and he puts I it back know. on and I I'm was, like mm. I wrote that too I'm like oh how did he fool the guy about the ring yeah and hypnos is just taking his on and off and he's like fine yeah. and even uh, um, house core she she has the ring when they do the two ring test like yeah. it's not on her finger um but this big this i mean there's big twists and turns and it's quite adventurous i mean they yeah. do go on all of these uh trying to steal the horror's eyes which will locate mm-hmm. the fragment of Babel, which Babel. is what gives magic to the world and yeah. The fallen house wants to put all the babble pieces together to to create like godlike power, and he has golden blood. The mm-hmm. weird guy, like uh, Roger yeah, Joubert. Um, and but it's like, yeah, I it still didn't really suck me in, and 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 it got me. I think I found a review that summarizes my thoughts very well. Do you know uh, that in the book there were pictures? Well, not in the book I was reading. There was no. There was some drawings and stuff. Yeah, there's drawings and pictures. So I was no, thinking, pictures. If you just like shapes. If you listen to the book, I thought that you would be missing. Not you, you, but like people will be yeah. missing out on the visualization that they actually wrote down about all of the 
clues and things like that. The objects. Objects. Yeah, no, I saw those in the book too, but obviously they don't talk about them. Or I didn't didn't listen to You can't see them when you listen to the book. So I thought that was a kind of a... Uh, if you want to see these objects, mm-hmm. you have to read the book. I mean, I would say read the book. Yeah, read the book. Read anyways. the book. I mean, the, the narration is not good. And unless you like hearing French accents all the time, you really should not be listening to this book. Um, but the stories that they need to take, they, I mean, it's hard to summarize this story because Hip knows he's the head of House Nix and yeah. he tricks... Um, Severin or Severin and to a deal a, like an oath by basically following a blood trail from him knowing that he had his compass stolen from him and there was yeah. blood on the side yeah. um, and then the idea is that Hypnos wants um, Severin to be restored as the patriarch for the house Vanth and he wants the house Vanth to be restored and they believe that the Turing test is was faked that that he was actually the the heir, yeah. which it turns out like massive spoiler, he's not. Yeah. Uh, which I guess book two and three is probably gonna explore that heritage. Yeah. I'm guessing he's fallen house. But yeah. I don't know. Um, and then, but they're still saying like we can't ever tell him he's not the heir. Yeah, like, but because well. he is the patriarch at this point, but yeah. he didn't do the test, which is also weird because all he wanted was to do the test, and now it doesn't how, want to. How old? are these kids I to think be they're 19 to decide that they're going to rule all these houses I think they're 19 ish I mean I don't know there how was old a lot of... is, but it was very unclear how mm. old they are but I think Tristan was 16 I think this was actually said at one point okay uh, and he's He's been abused so much. Like I hated how old the stepfathers that he named them after the seven deadly sins. Like I hated, yeah. hated this part of this yeah. book. I was like, Ugh, it's predictable that he would have had a stepfather that each had these traits. Like, mm. come on, do the order not care at all about who gets to raise children? Like, what the fuck? You keep yeah. putting them with like the worst people. Uh, and I mean, he learned <laughs> skills, but yeah, still shitty. But Tristan's like the little brother of the group. Yeah. And everyone Seb is the like a sort he's of like leader, leader guy. He's cast. If he's cast. Do. And and uh Layla is I guess a little bit like I mean she's the She's temptress. Indian, right? Yeah. yeah. She's the she's temptress. like the dancer, she's the sex pot, you know, all of this and that. And there is a love story going on between her and Severin where they're both fighting their but, love and attraction right. for each other. But it, honestly, I think it took away from the story more than added to it. Like, but the bisexual half um, Enrique, Hispanic Enrique. That's his name. I keep forgetting Enrique what his name is. Enrique was bisexual. His slow simmering love story with Sophia, but then Sophia, and then also but then with he Hypnos. also had a thing with Hypnos, and then Sophia was pissed off about that. Yeah, and, and it was it, it got all tangly. But Sophia then, is like autistic. She's autistic. I thought uh, Tristan was autistic too. There uh, for a bit. Me too. But he's very childlike, Tristan. Yeah. And then it turns out he kills all the birds, which is weird. No, he's weird. And then, spoiler alert, he dies in the end. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. Yeah, and everyone's like devastated by this. Yeah. Nama, like, like why? not being able to do life. And it's like, yeah. but first of all, it was like he was captured. And then he was also like, he betrayed, betrayed them. them yeah. And then, no, just kidding, he didn't betray them. And then, no, he is betraying them. And just kidding. And then we have to forgive him. There was kind of a lot of that. And I actually wrote here that. Like, similar to um, Six of Crows and Shadow and Bone, where they have all these great plans, mm-hmm. but then, then they, like, but somebody so outplans well them, or, like, they in... get crossed or outwitted or things like that. It's I mean, like, I love that. Ta-da! I love that. But in Six of Crows, I love that, because you were like, oh, they have such a fantastic plan, this is going to go so well, and then shit, like, right at the beginning, shit would just go, like straight to hell and you'd be like oh my god how are they gonna get out of this whereas this one it was more like they almost succeeded and then towards the end something got thwarted and i don't know but then a tiny bit was also like but haha sev planned for this double cross but it's also Um, like severin's freaking door to his bedroom is a a special door that's hidden in a mirror and the mirror has a snake around it like the Ouroboros like his house mm. and I'm like oh no how very hidden yeah, yeah. there's mirror doors with a snake around it I wonder where that leads you know like and I also wonder if it was just in reading the book or if you would have gotten also it in if you were just listening to the book but there were hints of things everywhere 
Yeah. And I figured everything out the entire time. And then it was it was actually like twist, but you're like, but yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> but I found a review that summarizes yeah. my feelings about okay. this book very much. Okay. And it's it's on a, inscribed by Grand Grandpa Hobo one. Amazing. That yeah. is the Grandpa most Hobo amazing one. reviewer name I've ever uh, heard. There isn't anything about this book to make you that this book that makes your jaw drop. It's just a good magic slash steampunkish story with interesting characters set in a time and place when those things would have seemed quite probable. The only drawback for me anyways was the romantic subplot that at times became a significant distraction. Fortunately, the over the author never um let it overwhelm the main story. And it's a three star. And I'm like, when I came in to review this, like to rate it when I finished, and I'm like, I want to put this as three. Then I ended up putting it at four because three is mean. But it's really is a three star for me. Because I think I did not care that much for these characters. Like I wasn't invested okay. in the Layla and, and Severin love story. I was more invested in Enrique and Sophia, but then he screwed that up by by adding hypnos into the into the mix and Hypnos was an interesting character I mean I like how he was like trying to get in and 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 they were like trying to keep him out and and he had to gain their trust and all of this and that but and Severin is just a moody fucker and not even a good moody fucker like uh, Cass no just a I learned so much from my shitty stepfathers that I named them all after the seven deadly sins. I don't know, like, it, it got pretend- he was pretentious, is what he was. About three quarters of the way through, I wrote this um, note that said, I feel like this book is character developing for the following books. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of boring, but also will be forgotten once the story picks up in the next books. And I want to say, I felt the exact same way about Shadow and Bone. Yeah. It was like so much character development in the beginning. And you're all like, the characters are kind of plump. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, I didn't love them then. In, uh, in, uh, or in, in Six of Crows. No, in Shadow and Bones. Shadow and Bones. Yeah, but I, I read Six of Crows first and then Shadow and Bones. No, and I know. I but I'm characters. saying the, the first book yeah. was about the characters that were not at the time all that interesting no and honestly and lena is not interested throughout the whole, the whole <laughs> no, series i mean, I mean she Alina just keeps getting captured on yeah, the but she, <laughs> that's all she does these this great is plans like, and then let ha the darkling is smarter than you haha ha. um, the uh, priest is smarter than you haha ha. everyone's smarter everyone than you smart. yeah but she at least has like super magical powers and is very powerful and those kinds of things yeah. but it progressed in book two and three where you were then like addicted to the story yeah and like you wanted it to like everyone to win and have a happy ending and all this kind of stuff and you got on board with i don't know about hating the darkling because i still love him and love how many times he comes back to life <laughs> he's like unkillable. he's like my soap opera dream <laughs> um but so i think that's how i feel about this book i don't want to give it any like super negative judgments and and, and i rated it four stars in goodreads because I think that the next two books is going to get deeper and further into the story Probably. and it will be more exciting. So I'm going to give the next books a chance. Uh, Even I will, though I felt this book was actually kind of boring. I will give the next books a chance. Next two. I will I will see this through uh, all the way through the uh, to the end. But I I wasn't... I'm not excited to jump into book two. Like with yeah, The Bear and the Nightingale, yeah. like I put it down and I'm like, I need to know what's happening. Yeah. Like give me book two now. With this, I'm like, yeah, I will read it. It does not have to be right now. No. It can be later. I feel the same. So, we are not reading book two. We are moving on. We are. To Prince Theseus cover ever. No. I love these books so much. Yeah. As soon as I see a cover that looks like this, I'm like, done. Done. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, we're reading Prince of Never by Juno Hart. Yes. And it has all of the stuff that we love. It has fairies. All it of has it. romance. It has and Sarah from Whistler. Sarah from Whistler. She's it has like, all of the names that I love to ever. And her name is Juno, the author. I'm yeah, super. The girl's awesome. name is Laura, though, which is bomb. But it's because she has to be Sarah from Whistler. And so she's Laura from, and I put dot, 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 Chicago. I don't know where the frick <laughs> she's from. We don't know where she's from. She works in a diner. In a city that the is like... subway stop is yeah. forest something. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Okay. So we're going to judge this book by the cover first off yes. because these covers I found two. And yeah. 
they're both terribly awful. I and I love them so much. I love so I love the, these animated like drawings of yeah, this these is clearly ever here on the on the cover, and he's in his his metallic armor, which means that the Fey here can clearly touch uh, metal. In this metal, book. this looks like iron, um, and he has a pelt over his shoulder, and he has a crown, and he has. White hair. I don't know. White hair. White hair. I'm going to make it black in my mind. Oh, it's all good. <laughs> uh, and there's like leaves blowing around. And he him. has he has glowing eyes. Oh, he, all of him is glowing. Like he's got like a halo of light yeah. around his head. Yeah. And then the second one, <laughs> he's shirtless and he's got a good eight pack going on there. Nice. Uh, in his hand, there's some light. He's got a sword in his other hand. And then this red on the background. There seems to be some kind of castle back there too. Okay. So first impression. First cover, I would, I would pick this up. Second cover, no fucking way. No. This looks like a romance novel. This looks like, you know... <laughs> You know, <laughs> no, but you know what? This I fell in love with the gladiator. Guy. <laughs> you think so? Because this, the second cover with the dark red, makes me think that this is a vampire love story. Yeah, probably. And then the first cover is like, no, this, this is, is like fairy. Prince Fairy and yeah. stuff. So I would very much more pick up the first and the second one, but I still look at the second one and be like, oh, it's not a vampire. You know? No, he's not a vampire. He's a, it's a prince. And his name is Eva, and uh, she calls him Neva because, of course. <laughs> so there's a prologue explaining that there's a curse going yeah. on here on the prince. And the prince's blood is poisoned, and the curse can only be broken by a wife. <laughs> uh, which the prince does not want. I miss okay, what I did. That's a hilarious way of saying that. But it's true. <laughs> he has to be married. He has to have a wife. Uh, the prince does not want this. He plans on killing the girl that will break the curse as soon as he can find her. Oh, and he oh. looks for her every day, pretty much. So, so the girl, he doesn't want the curse to be broken. No, he does not want a wife. But there, there is like a hint that she's going to come out of a tree. And then it's like oh, you will find this be, person at a tree. Her, yeah. And then... Then she does, in fact, one day get sort of captured by these, like, yeah. fae pixie so girls. So the girl is Laura. She's 19 years old. Mm-hmm. Her mom's dead, and she has no dad. Mm-hmm. Before her mom died, she drew fairy pictures and told Laura at one point to beware of the fairies because you might fall into danger in their world uh, and to trust nothing, but they cannot lie. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Laura's mom was hit by a truck and... Wouldn't tell Laura anything else. She literally describes it as the Wizard of Oz, uh, Witch of the East, that get crushed by by uh, Dorothy's house falling on her. Um, but Laura keeps dreaming of the Fae. And one day at work, she has this pounding headache, so she gets to leave work a little early, and she's lured into an alley by these weird girls, and then her feet are sprouting roots, and she is flying. I don't know how this works together, but this is what they said. And when she next wakes, she's by a creek, and there's a big dog sniffling at her, and a rude man, Hmm. man in in quotation mark here, uh, basically telling her off for not giving up her name and for being there in general. Yeah. Um... And he is dressed weird, and she mistakes him for a LARPer, so a live action role playing dude, so a a role player. Uh, Like he's a very good actor. Like her inner monologue here is hilarious. Yeah, the man is Eva, and he's the thirteenth prince of his land, and he's the one with the curse. And he does not recognize Laura for the girl who will break his curse, but rather thinks she's a goblin or a troll, which is fine. Yeah. Funny. Hmm. Uh, And when he finds out she's human, he complains that she smells bad. Yeah. Uh, so the first meeting is going great. Yeah. Uh, he's a prince of the air, which means he's silly court. He cannot lie, but he can use uh, lies if it's like sarcastic and it's close oh. enough to the truth. A joke. Okay. Uh, and she makes this deal with him where she's super clever 19-year-old um, Laura from <laughs> wherever, uh, <laughs> where she manages to trick this fairy prince uh she makes a deal to be obedient and not try to run away or anything for two days and two nights and she's hoping to stall the return to his court so she can break free before they get here because he needs to bring her in front of his queen and she plans to lull him into sense of security by just being nice and goody two shoesy uh and then just turning on him and bringing out her feisty self and making a run for... I don't know what her plan is, honestly. Mm-hmm. And she refuses to call him ever. She calls him never. Yeah. And he's like, whatever, fine. Call me whatever. 
So yeah, what do you think was going to happen in this book? <laughs> I think it's a trilogy, so... It is a trilogy, so I'm not sure I'm sure to what's going to happen in the beginning. But, like, with all of these stories, I really hope Laura from the city, let's just say, because she's from the city. <laughs> Jenny from the block. Um, Jenny from the block. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I really hope Laura from the city is more than just Sarah from Whistler. I think she is. I get the feeling she is. She's better prepared. Like, Sarah from Whistler was just like... I am a firefighter. I'm going to make a stand. <laughs> I've been selected by God and this God-like creature now loves and adores me. All great. Whereas I feel like Lara from uh, from the city is, uh, her mom has been planning. She knew this was going to happen. So some deal has been made at some point with mm. someone. And and the, he doesn't want to break his curse, which means that breaking the curse would probably put him under the power of something else. Or, you know, like... There's going to be a bigger game at play here because otherwise, why wouldn't he want to break his curse, you know? Yeah, okay, I see what you mean. And like, if it's just like, you're going to be in love and you're going to be free of this poison in your yeah, blood. Like, no, he's like, like no, I don't want love. No. I prefer poison. Please yeah. don't save me from But he's anything. also like a bored fae that's like not even interested in killing anymore because killing is now boring him. And he's lived so long and his life is... But this 19-year-old little twig of a girl, she's going to outwit him. You know, She's going to make it exciting for him because mm. she's going to be an unexpected person in yeah. his life. But she's of gonna course, be there's outwitting. going to be a love, right? Yeah. And I think she will probably fight against it for the majority of the first book. And then she'll give in and be like, you dumb... <laughs> you dumb you old... You dumb love. <laughs> yeah. I loved you the whole time. And then he'll be like... Uh, you know, he's a very medieval princey with his language and everything, too. So he's like, my fair maiden, come yeah. and let's make bed movements. And Let's make bed movements. <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bed everyone movements should make and, bed movements. And, and child making. And child making. All yeah. right, bed movements and child making. There, that's my prediction. That, that's the prediction. <laughs> that's also the title of this episode. <laughs> I've already forgotten what I said, so I'm going to have to listen to this and write it down as I'm listening. All right. Anyways, we better get back to figuring out if our predictions are accurate. And Let's do it. We'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye. We'd Rather Be Reading is an original podcast by Jerrica Ceron and Leah Sanfer. The music for The Penguins, written and performed by David Allred from the album The Transition, courtesy of Erased Tapes. Please check him out on Spotify and check us out on social media. We're on Facebook and Instagram at We'd Rather Be Reading and on Twitter at We'd Rather Read. You can also email us at We'd Rather Be Reading the Pod at gmail.com. Thanks for listening.